We've all seen what artificial intelligence can do on our screens, our itty bitty screens, generating art, carrying out conversations, helping you write things. It won't be long though before we can see what AI does around in the physical 3D world. Gardner Research believes in fact by 2030, 80% of us will be engaging in some way with an autonomous AI powered robot every single day. Yeah, we met an MIT professor who's leading the way in developing these machines and to find out What's actually possible right now, and is it safe? Good morning. If you want to be amazed. Can you see my face? Or maybe a little alarmed. Yes, I can see your face. Consider the brave new world of robots. Some are almost reassuringly human. While others, a little freaky. But guess what? The robots that we have today are primarily demonstrations. Daniela Roos leads MIT's famed Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab. She explained how, for all the hype out there, researchers are actually still figuring out the artificial brains these machines need to navigate our physical world. It's not so hard to get the robot to do a task once. But to get that robot to do the task repeatedly in human-centered environments where things change around the robot all the time, that is very hard. So despite how easy Little miss. science fiction has made it all seem, the science reality of Rosie the Robot Bring my slippers, please. Atta girl. is still a lot more like Ruby here. Ruby, can you make some lemonade, please? a humanoid robot bought off the shelf and then painstakingly trained to complete what only looks like. Not bad, not bad at all, look at that. A simple task. Whoa. <laughs> we collect data from how humans um, do the tasks. We are then able to uh, teach machines how to do those tasks in a human-like fashion. Great. So Ruby, let's pour a glass of lemonade for Tony. a bit messy. Not bad, not bad. While our human brains come preloaded with all sorts of talents for the physical world, Roos's students have to teach the so AI the even the simplest of moves, wearing well sensors well like these. Activity. So you wow. can tell like how tense they're holding something or how stiff their arms are, and you can get a sense of the forces involved in these physical tasks that we're trying to learn. So this is where delicate versus strong gets learned. So this robot, Ruby, learned to scoop from you wearing that. Exactly. Elsewhere in the lab, Roos explained how today's existing robots are often way more limited than you might think. The robots we have in industrial settings essentially do the same thing over and over and over again. We are interested in having robots do more for us. This robot arm, for example, has grips that in the future may be used for household chores or in medical settings. But even when AI is helping design and build it, the finished product might give you a newfound respect for the human hand. And so here you see the gripping operation. And then, come and then you need to have another degree of freedom that can uh, push the, uh, the syringe down. This is like the thumb. That's the thumb, exactly. Okay. The future, though, is always on the way. So I like to think about AI and robots as, as giving people superpowers. So with AI, we get cognitive superpowers. So think about getting speed, knowledge, insight, creativity, foresight. On the physical side, we can use machines to extend our reach, to refine our precision to amplify our strengths. And you should rest assured, Ruse tells us, there's a simple idea for handling the risks. When we talk about robots in the home, people immediately think of the, the Terminator, the robot turning on humanity. I imagine myself 20 years from now trying to fall asleep in a house with multiple autonomous robots and I don't know if I sleep as peacefully as I do right now. All the machines we build have the red button. So if you're not happy with your machine, you just push the red button and that stops the machine. Okay. AI and robots are tools. They are tools created by the people for the people. 
And like any other tools, they're not inherently good or bad. They are what we choose to do with them. And I believe we can choose to do extraordinary things. I love that. Okay. I love Daniela Ruiz. She's really building the future there. And she's yeah. doing it in a responsible way. That C-Sale Lab at MIT is very impressive. And you don't like the red button? She makes uh, it sound enough. like the red button is easy. All you do is push a button. Haven't you pushed a red button and it didn't do what you wanted it to do? <laughs> yes, I have. If, if MIT's building Sometimes you hit leaving meeting and that doesn't work. Yeah, it's true. That's, that's <laughs> true. Your face oh, is yeah. still sitting Good up point, there. I'm going, I'm trying to say body. Well, listen, iRobot and movies, movies like iRobot and Ex Machina, yeah. um, they yeah. scared the daylights out of yeah. me. But this piece showed me that we are not that close we are to not. those types of robots. Yes. We really aren't. Which yes. gives me a peace of mind. The physical yes. world I, is complicated for robots. There we go. All right, good stuff, Tony.